My soul proclaims the greatness, the greatness of the... Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer on this Wednesday, the 4th of November. I hope you are all well this morning. And this is our first morning prayer that we've had in our new season in the church's year, where we now started All Saints on Monday and we go all the way through to Advent. So I hope you are all well this morning. Um, hopefully today will be slightly better than yesterday, as it was a little bit blowy yesterday and, and uh, a little bit wild. So I hope today will be a restful day for you all. And today also is the day before we begin our next period of lockdown. We're going to be preparing some resources for everyone to use during this next four weeks. And as I would said to um, all of our parishioners, if you would like to have a chat, please do phone me at home. If I'm out, leave a message on my phone and I will call you back. So shall we now begin our service, which is our service of morning prayer, which commences on page 17. And after our initial introduction, there is a pause where we can bring our hopes and our concerns and our worries before God this morning. So shall we now begin on page 17. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us now pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Well, shall we now say together the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 20, sorry, chapter 2, verses 25 to the end. Arioch took Daniel to the king at once and said, I have found a man among the exiles from Judah who can tell the king what his dream means. The king asked Daniel, also called Belteshazzar, Are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. As your majesty was lying there, your mind turned to things to come, and the revealer of mysteries showed you what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. Your majesty looked, 
and there before you stood a large statue. An enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream, and now we will interpret it to the king. Your Majesty, you are the King of Kings. The God of Heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. You are that head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything, and as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, chief ministers over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Our reflection today is written by Rosalind Brown. This chapter focuses on Daniel's dependence on God to reveal the dream and its meaning and then his wisdom in presenting this to the king. Like Joseph, this faithful young man tried to remain faithful to God while in exile and dealing with a powerful king. The dream of a giant statue made from increasingly inferior metals from its head to its feet appears to refer to the succession of empires between the date the story is set, around 600 BC, and it's being written down in around 165 BC. They are generally accepted as the Babylonian, Median, Persian and Greek empires. The final indestructible kingdom could be an unnamed empire yet to come, or an anticipation of the Jewish state 
established after the Maccabean Revolt in the mid-2nd century BC. By indicating this history was foretold, the author reassured his readers that God had been in control throughout the rise and fall of pagan empires, and their current vicious persecution by Antioch Epiphanes would end with God's victory. Daniel quickly reminded the king that no wise man can explain dreams, only God can reveal mysteries, and boldly asserted that Nebuchadnezzar's greatness was actually given to him by God in heaven. The king responded by acknowledging God's power and promoting Daniel, who used the opportunity to secure promotion for his three faithful friends. Like Joseph centuries earlier, prayer and faithful living enabled Daniel to serve God in a pagan environment. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, shall we now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Someday you wish upon a star, wake up where the clouds 
What 